All right, we're going to go ahead and get started. Welcome and thank you for joining the DTE Energy Clawson Virtual Open House. Uh, my name is Kevin Brewster and I will be your moderator for the evening. Our goal tonight is to provide you with detailed information about the past outages you've experienced and what we are doing about it. Um, we will have Anna Medina and Nick Paglia from our engineering team, as well as Shannon Palmer from our tree trim team, who will share specifically where we have identified locations where work is necessary and any plans for future work. Uh, we will also have a question and answer chat session available throughout this presentation this evening to give you the opportunity to ask your questions to our team, and we will answer those questions live at the end of our presentation. Uh, if your question is specific to your home or your property, um, please include in your question the name, address, and contact information, and a member of our team will respond directly to you within a private chat. Uh, to get us started this evening, I'm going to turn this over to our Senior Vice President of Distribution Operations here at DTE, Heather Rivard. Thanks, Kevin. As Kevin mentioned, I'm Heather Rivard, Senior Vice President of Electric Distribution here at DTE. I want to thank everyone who was able to join this evening for taking the time out to hear about the work that we're doing in the city. And before that, and first and foremost, I've also wanted to apologize for the poor reliability that you've been experiencing in the city of Clawson. And I appreciate your patience as we continue to get our work uh, identified and completed over the last several weeks. The team tonight is going to give a very good update on all of the work that was identified, um, much of which has been completed, and they'll also give an update on what's left to do. Um, but again, I do apologize for the poor reliability that you've been experiencing, and hopefully tonight's update will make you, um, give you more comfort in terms of reliability going forward within the city of Clawson. I also wanted to give a shout out and um, some appreciation to the city. It has been great working with Mayor Scripture, uh, Matt Hodges from the DPW yard, and of course, City Councilman, Mr. Sampson. Uh, it's really been a great partnership over the last few months in terms of working together on no, not only identifying the work that is needed, but also making sure that the communication uh, has gotten out to the residents of the city of Clawson through joint Facebook page posts uh, and other messages. So hopefully some of the information that you hear tonight is information you've also received previously. Um, and with that, I will um, turn it back over to the team to go ahead and get into tonight's content, but I will be uh, remaining on the call if there are any specific questions for me as we go throughout. Uh, good evening, everyone. Um, my name is Ana Medina. I'm the director uh, for the area of uh, Clawson. Uh, I'm responsible for like the engineering team and the alignment and splicers that basically operate uh, our system. Uh, like Heather mentioned, first of all, uh, I apologize for the uh, reliability that you guys have experienced recently. Uh, we obviously have seen an uptick uh, through the summer. But uh, thanks to working uh, with uh, with the city, we were actually able to respond uh, uh, pretty quick uh, to the issues that you guys were experiencing. So I'm going to be going over uh, the work uh, that we have planned uh, first. Just I'll walk a bit through kind of like the like the like the layout. So we have a couple of circuits that are the ones that are feeding uh, most of the city of Clawson. Uh, these are the two that have most of the reliability issues. And as I walk through the presentation, we're going to be going over, we're going to take uh, one circuit at a time. We're going to be talking about what were the outages that you guys experienced, uh, what caused the outage, and then we're going to be walking and talking through the work that we're doing to improve the service. Uh, so with that, uh, the slide here, uh, it shows a couple different maps. Uh, the two circuits that we have the most uh, issues are Apache uh, 8996, uh, and we have a circuit of uh, Mommy 8241. So we're going to be centering most of the work, uh, most of the outage around these two. If uh, 
you are uh, not within this boundary, we're more than happy to take your address and we will be looking and getting back to you into what work or what might be the reason for your outage. So the first one, Apache 8996, is the first circuit that we want to talk through. Uh, the red section in here is what really is on the city of Clawson. Uh, the area, uh, I realize that it's a bit hard to see from the map. Uh, the area is uh, south of uh, 75 down to 14 mile. And just as a reference, it's from like the post office uh, down to Livernois. What we did in order to be able to talk through the outages, we divided uh, the circuit into five different sections, and then we're going to be talking what outages affected that section. Just to give you guys kind of like a general overview of how a circuit works, uh, the numbers in here are, or the letters, I should say, they're kind of like sequential. So, so what it means, if we have an issue on section A of the circuit, that is uh, the portion of the circuit that comes from our substation and the, from the substation it goes to the overhead uh, that uh, goes uh, to your home. If we have an issue on section A, uh, any other section within that circle will be affected and so on. So as I go through the presentation, I'll highlight what were the significant events that we have over the last year what cost them, and then what customers uh, saw the, the interruption. So the first event that we had uh, last summer, uh, we have it on where that star is. Uh, it was uh, is, uh, the cable pole. The cable pole is pretty much where we have the transition between power coming from the substation up to the pole. We had a failure on that cable pole. Uh, that failure on the cable pole uh, caused an interruption to the whole circuit. So if you are on this general area, uh, you experienced that outage uh, back on July. The second outage that we had was uh, in May, and this is actually when we started seeing a bit of the uptick on outages uh, on, uh, on your area, it was in May, uh, May 17. Uh, we had a lightning strike that hit one of our lines, and we had uh, a couple uh, lines of uh, power lines that came down as a result. Uh, you will see when we start talking about the work that we're doing, uh, some of the work is actually gonna be just to address uh, this same issue. When we actually had that uh, blue section out, if you are on the blue on the green, uh, you saw that outage. The next outage that we had was in uh, 610. Um, you will see that between 610 and the next couple of slides that I'm gonna show, they really affected that area in green and they were due to trees. Uh, one thing that uh, the engineers uh, identified when they were doing patrols, uh, we found uh, a couple of or some trees uh, that were, uh, you know, growing into the power lines, and that's part of our solution. So we had this event on 610. Then we have another event uh, on 628. Uh, similar type, a tree fell in our uh, power lines, and this time broke some uh, overhead equipment. And then we have another one uh, on 7-7 seven, seven, uh, that we suspect that it was uh, trees uh, getting into our power lines uh, that caused uh, one area of, uh, or one, uh, yeah, one, one section to open and open uh, our recloser. So one thing that I'd like to say too, you will see that uh, at times you might wonder why you lost power and why maybe your uh, neighbor didn't lose power. The way that the circuits are uh, sectionalized or that we break them down, which is all the different blocks that we have here in different colors, they have different equipment that we have on the power lines that they're intended and designed to see an outage, uh, try to clear it. If they cannot clear that fault, they just will open that. So I want to share a bit kind of like uh, our response and the work that we did. Uh, 
we, as soon as we started seeing the uptick of outages, we had a team that went out and completed a patrol from all the power lines uh, that are within this area of uh, Apache 8996. Uh, we had uh, a, a equipment that the team identified, equipment that we saw that immediately had to be fixed. Uh, we took care of it uh, right away. Then uh, we follow with a couple different projects, uh, which is what we call our customer excellence project. And uh, we had a lot of locations of uh, cross arms, uh, insulators, arresters, cutouts. These are all the equipment, all the gear that we have on the pole top that needed to be replaced. So we had a lot of work uh, replacing uh, that equipment. We had a number of poles uh, that were replaced as well. Uh, we took care of some things, like I said, the one that it was like due to lighting, we replaced some of that equipment that will uh, help isolate that on the fissure. And then we also did some, uh, what we call strategic pre-trimming. So we went ahead and really identified what were the areas that we had trees growing on the power lines and we uh, removed them. Uh, all the work in that area was completed in uh, July uh, 2020. Uh, some of the future work that we will have, and uh, Shannon will talk briefly about it, will be our routine, uh, routine uh, tree trimming work, uh, which she will offer uh, more details as we get uh, to that part of the presentation. Uh, from now, I am going to turn it over to Nick Caglia. He's our engineer. Uh, he's responsible uh, for this uh, area of Clawson and also that vicinity. He will share the work that we did uh, on Mommy. And also, if again, if you happen to see uh, that maybe you're on, on, on this event and your address might not be within the work that we're going to cover, please post it on the chat or post any questions and we'll be taking them uh, at the end of the presentation. And with that, I'm going to turn it to Nick. Thank you, Anna. Um, good evening. Uh, my name is Nicholas Paglia. Um, I am the principal engineer for um, the Pontiac service area. The city of Clawson is one of the cities that I, I oversee as well as um, Birmingham, Auburn Hills, Pontiac, just to name a few. Um, what you see on your screens now is the circuit map for what we call Maumee 8241. Uh, the extent of the circuit goes, starts as far north as East Maple and works its way south into the city of Clawson. Uh, the city of Clawson proper is circled in blue, going all the way down to uh, roughly Parkland Boulevard, just a few blocks south of 14 miles. That's how far south it goes. East-west, it goes from Rochester all the way to just about one block west of Custer. Similar to how Anna talked about Apache 8996, we wanted to break this circuit into sections to help understand how the outages kind of impact the circuit as a whole. Um, and here, we, we broke it down into four sections. Uh, anything in section A is going to really impact the entire circuit. Um, and then kind of from there, section B, anything inside that blue section is going to be um, impacted on its own. Same thing with section C in the, in the orange and in section D, same thing in the green. Okay, now we're just gonna kind of just step through the outages um, over the past 12 months or so. Um, starting on July 20th of last year, uh, where we had uh, found one phase, one span of wire uh, down, causing one of our sectionalizing devices, uh, a recloser, uh, to open. Um, our crews get out there and found that trees were the, the cause of that particular outage. And it's only impacted only in the blue section here. Uh, stepping forward, September 19th of 2019, um, a failed automatic sleeve on one of the wires causing the, the next upstream device, uh, sectionalizing device to open. Um, when, you, when I say the word sleeve, sometimes 
when a crew needs to put wire up and get it up to restore service, sometimes the crews will actually cut the wire, keep minding that it's de-energized, they will cut the wire and they will use a sleeve to bridge the connection together. Um, the, really the best way to kind of describe what a sleeve looks like is like one of those finger traps. They put the wire together, put it under tension, and then they can go ahead and put the wire back on the cross arms. Um, that's really the best way to talk about what a sleeve is. Um, sometimes they do fail, and in this case, it would cause an outage to just the orange section. Now, here's where we started getting more frequent outages going into 2020, and that's when the uptick really started happening. Um, uh, April 21st, a burnt open jumper uh, downstream of the sectionalizing device located at Lincoln, just on the west side of Rochester, right here where the star is. Uh, jumper is just a, a word that we use for uh, wire. Um, sometimes those, they can burn open and then it can cause a recloser or sectionalizing device to open, causing an outage. June 3rd of this year, um, we had an outage due to trees inside this blue section um, south of Hendrickson Boulevard um, around High Street. Um, we had a couple locations where there were broken cross arms and broken pins um, and trees being the, the cause of the outage in that particular case. And again, if it's the way this circuit is configured, if it happens in the blue and the orange or in the green sections, it's typically just going to be in that particular area. July 7, 2020, um, this outage actually impacted not just it actually impacted the entire circuit. It was actually in an intentional interruption to relieve load um, on our high voltage lines. Um, this is a little outside of the normal, um, especially in the summertime. Uh, we do sometimes um, get caught in these kinds of situations. And so you know, to prevent something uh, significant occurring, sometimes we do have to take an intentional interruption um, to, to prevent that uh, extraordinary event from happening, which could end up being even a longer outage. July 10, um, there was an outage on our high voltage sub transmission lines. Um, similar to one of the outages that Anna talked about earlier um, on Apache 8996, uh, our crews go out and they patrol the lines and found no, no hazards, nothing that was you know, no damage or anything like that. So we believe in this particular case that this was due to trees, um, something from outside hitting the wires causing an outage. Now, this is one of the most recent ones that you experienced. This happened on August 8th, and we have a picture here. Um, as most of you probably are aware, we're doing construction work right now, which I will touch base on very soon, um, which require is going to be replacing poles and cross arms. In order for crews to, to do that without interrupting customers, we, we put the, the wires on what we call hot arms. Um, and if there's questions geared towards construction, um, we, we can answer those as they come. Uh, but in this case, um, one of the things that we call a hot arm where we put the energized wire on as we're putting new wire in, one of those hot arms failed and it ended up causing a wire down um, and thus causing an outage. Um, and as you can see, this yellow, where the yellow circle is here, that's where the hot arm was, was supposed to be, and that's where it actually kept falling down onto the ground. You can see up to the right, right here, that's what a, a hot arm looks like. And again, this allows our crews to go ahead and replace wire and do construction without interrupting customers. So what the plan moving forward, um, similar to what we did on Apache 8996, we had our customer excellence program go through and patrol the entire circuit from start to finish. And we focused on removing anything that can cause an immediate outage. Um, that includes cross arms, insulators, 
uh, fuse cutouts, arresters. Um, we installed animal protection in some places and we replaced a few poles as well. Um, as also, as part of this project, we installed additional sectionalizing on the circuit to make outage areas smaller um, in areas that don't already have sectionalizing. And we also did strategic tree trimming as part of that project. Um, this work was completed earlier in the month of this year in August. Um, what probably some of you on the southern half of the circuit are seeing is some what we call system hardening work. Uh, that picture of the hot arm with the wires where we're replacing that. Um, that's this work is going to focus on addressing those issues so that way they don't happen again or at least mitigating it uh, to it reduces the risk. Um, and what is system hardening? It's upgrading and rebuilding infrastructure, replacing wire and poles to increase the robustness of the overall circuit. Uh, what's the benefit? Less outages um, and in some cases you can get improved restoration times as well. Uh, we are targeting, uh, I believe there's one section of that work finishing, I believe at the end of next week. And there was, and I believe one more portion to come uh, that will be expected to be completed in, uh, I believe early October. And then um, as for tree trimming, we'll be performing uh, strategic tree trimming during trouble events. And if there's more questions towards tree trimming, uh, the next person that I will be introducing, Shannon Palmer, the director of tree trimming, will be able to answer those in a little bit greater detail. So I'm going to go ahead and pass it over to Shannon. Thanks, Nick. Appreciate that. As Nick said, my name is Shannon Palmer. I'm the director of tree trim. So I'll talk a little bit more about the trimming. As Nick and Anna both mentioned, there's been a lot of strategic tree trimming that's already occurred in your area to address the trouble situations. Over the next few years, we'll be coming in to do maintenance tree trimming. So I want to let you know a little bit more about what to expect for that process. So as you can see here, this is what we call our four phase process. So when we're ready to come in and do tree trip maintenance trimming in the area, we'll work through the, the city um, to let everybody know that we're coming. And as we get closer to uh, actually trimming on a circuit, we'll send all the residents on that in that area calls and letters to let them know that uh, tree trimming activity will be getting soon in their area. Then we'll send pre planners out who go door to door. They knock on every door, assess every yard to see what needs to be done. Um, we don't remove trees uh, on proactive work without a signed permit from the homeowner. So they attempt to get the signed permits. And once all that work is done, uh, we turn that plan over to our contractors who go through the area, execute the trimming, and then we follow up with auditing after that. If you can go to the next slide. So in the meantime, there, as, as mentioned, uh, there's been some work that's done in the area. In the meantime, before we can get there on maintenance tree trimming, if anybody has any concerns about a tree in their yard that they want to have evaluated, um, there are two ways that you can do that. One, on the screen right here, you can see if you go to the DTE Energy webpage, if you go under services and price and go down under tree trimming on the left-hand side there, it'll take you to the, the tree trim tab and you can see at the very bottom where it says tree trim inquiries. If you click on that, um, there's a form right there where you can file a tree trim inquiry. We have a team that monitors that daily. Um, usually they're going to get back to you within 48 hours, but we do promise within five to seven business days a response and we will send an evaluator out to your yard to take a look at uh, whatever the concern is and work with you going forward on that. Um, if you do not want to uh, use the internet or go on the website, you can always call the 1-800 number uh, and go through that route as well to report the tree concern. And that is all I have for tree trimming. Um, so I will turn it over to the moderator, Kevin, for a Q&A session. Great, thank you, Shannon. All right, so again, just a reminder, we do have the question and answer chat section available to you to submit your questions or concerns uh, related to anything you've heard tonight. Or again, if you have specific questions related to your home or your specific property, um, we're more than happy to take that information and follow up directly with you um, in a private conversation. Uh, so I'll give it just a moment uh, to allow any questions to come through. As of right now, we don't have any. Um, so we'll give you just a moment to submit those if you have anything.
right, I'm still not seeing anything coming through. Um, so again, thank you for joining us this evening. Uh, we really appreciate you taking the time out of your evening to join us and to hear about the work and improvements we are making to your area. And again, um, there's information in the, uh, the chat section about how you can follow up with us if you do have additional questions or concerns um, with our direct contact phone number or our email account as well. Send us a message and we'd be more than happy to respond to you and work with you uh, to resolve any issues you have. So again, thank you for joining and have a great evening.